welcome. Yeah, it feels great to be here with you all today. And I just thought I'd begin with sharing a little bit about my inspiration for even why I want to do this show. And it's really um, an opportunity for me to, in an authentic way, just share, you know, every time I have a show, what's, what's present for me and what my own healing is and what are the themes that are coming up. So, yeah, I, I think it's, it's just a great way for me to be able to keep the miracle in awareness by extending it and sharing it. And at the same time, just being very transparent and open with my journey and everything that's happening. Um, I also feel like it's an opportunity for me to have guests on the show and to go into specific themes that are inspiring to me and I feel would also be inspiring to all of you, some things that it's just great to go into in a deeper way. And with that in mind, um, the theme today is actually going to be music and how music can be a pathway to God and how the spirit can really use it for healing and for forgiveness. Um, my special guest on the show today is Netta Boyne, who I'm going to be introducing shortly. But before that, I would just like to share a little bit about my, my own journey with um, how the Spirit has used music in my life and, um, yeah, just all the healing that has happened for me with that. Yeah, the Course is really a pathway of handing everything over to the Spirit, you know, um, surrendering all of our skills and all of our abilities to be used by Him for healing. And um, music in and of itself isn't special in any way. Um, nothing in form is, it's all neutral. So whether it be music or art or dancing, it doesn't really matter. But what is important is the purpose that's underneath. And everything in form can be used either by the ego or by the spirit. And the ego can use music as well. It can use it to maintain a, maintain a self-concept, um, for pride, for control, um, yeah, for, for, uh, to keep the egoic thought system in place. But when handed over to the spirit, the uh, music can actually be used for the opposite, to, to undo the self-concept, for forgiveness, for healing, for allowing the blocks in the mind to come up to be released. So yeah, with that in mind, I, I just thought I would share a little bit about my own journey. And yeah, I, before I found A Course in Miracles and came to live with the Living Miracles community, I was pursuing a career as an opera singer. And um, I studied in university for a number of years, got my degree in music, and then I moved to Italy where I continued to, to study over there and began to to go in the direction of launching my career. And although music was always something that was very natural for me, you know, as a child I would I would love to sing. It, it actually felt involuntary. There was just, just this joy with wanting to sing and dance all the time. When I started to go in the direction of m making it my career, it was like the ego got in there too and, and hijacked it. And it started to become about something very different than the purity it had been before. You know, before there was just like this passion and joy. And it, but it, it started to, to transfer into, into something else. And when there were ideas there of, I need to be successful so I can survive, I can make a living out of this. And um, it started to become very heavy for me. Um, competition thoughts started to come in, um, perfectionism, a lot of judgment on, on th my, this body and this voice and judgment on other bodies and other voices, voices and how, it all c how I compared with them and was I better, was I worse, would I get the audition. And um, yeah, it, it got to the point where I started to experience a lot of anxiety when I would sing and um, it a lot of fear and um, yeah this progressed actually for a number of years until 
I got to the point where my voice got so locked up that I wasn't able to sing anymore. I, uh, I was asked to sing at a very uh, simple um, carol service one Christmas and I tried to sing a Christmas carol which was nothing that would ever have been difficult for me before and my voice was totally locked. I, I couldn't even get the sound out. And so I, I reached a point where I just felt like um, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, I, I can't. So I, I actually gave up singing completely. I, um, I, I went from the to, to the total opposite. I went from um, everything in my life was about pursuing this career and, and singing to actually pushing it away and not wanting to listen to opera music, not wanting to sing at all. And that's actually when um, A Course in Miracles came into my life and, um, and also David Hofmeister. And it felt like it was, it was an important transition where I had to fully let go because you know, um, there, was, there was a real um, lockdown in my mind around music and around singing. But um, I do remember I, uh, when David Hofmeister came over to the UK and I went to a weekend retreat with him, I hadn't sung for a number of months before that. I had no desire to sing. It was like a full push away in my mind. And in this um, retreat, I had this heart opening experience where I just felt like my heart was bursting with love and had all of this emotion. And uh, I think it was the second morning of the retreat, I, I got out of bed, I woke up really early, and I just had this feeling like I have to sing, like there was something in me that I couldn't hold back. And before the first gathering started that morning, I, I just sang for about an hour and a half, just anything that was coming to my mind, it was just like pouring through me. And David actually invited me to come and sing at the Strawberry Fields Music and Enlightenment Festival. And I feel like that was the transition to the spirit starting to use singing and my voice in a very different way. Um, and over, over the years, I've had many opportunities to, um, to use my voice for the spirit's purposes, and um, and I can see now that you know the spirit is going to um, use everything because me pushing it away was not the solution. You know, it wasn't the way to heal whatever the fear and doubt that was coming up in my mind. It was a retranslation of what had been misused, misused by the ego before. So it's been a journey for me over the last five years to. Um, to accept the music back in and for it to come from a very different place. You know, for me now, I, I can only, the only purpose for me with singing is that I feel that deep connection with the spirit and, and it's for a deeper healing and there's a presence there that wants to come through and there's a joy and there's a heart opening and an expansion in my mind. And if that's not there, then music is, is pointless. There's, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't offer me anything anymore. So yeah, with that, I, I actually just want to introduce Netta Boyne, and I'm so delighted that, um, that she um, has come on the show today. And um, yeah, for, for those of you who don't know Netta, she is um, a beautiful singer-songwriter who has just fully given her voice over to the spirit to be used um, to bless, really. And. Um, yeah, Neda, I, I would love just to, to hear from you and and maybe you could even share a little bit about your experience with um, coming into really handing your voice over to the spirit because I know it's been a transition for you. Uh, you you had a number of years as a out there as a professional singer and I know you were on the Voice of Holland and you did so like well in that and and yeah, just had these opportunities to really just shine your light. But maybe you could share a little bit about how you went from that to now releasing an album that is totally based on uh, <laughs> the teachings of A Course in Miracles. Right. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's been quite a journey. Um, so yeah, the songs that I, that I was singing, um, they were always very inspiring. Like they always contain a message. They always, uh, I never just made music 
uh, with like, oh, baby, I love you so, and you know, this and that. Like I always, from from young, I it was more about like one. I was really like in that state of mind where I wanted to change the world. So like my songs were very much of like protest and um, about women's rights and you know, like more like that type of thing. And then when the Course in Miracles um, came on my path, I think now about seven years ago. Um, there was already a shift happening from wanting to change the world to wanting to change my own mind and my own my own mind about the world, my perception of the world. And um, after studying the course for like two years, I went to um, like I, <laughs> I gave up my whole thing of like, oh, I have to do everything alone. So I, I joined the group. Um, and my teacher in that course group, she was saying like, oh, you're a singer. Do you also sing songs from A Course in Miracles? Or like, do you get inspired by A Course in Miracles to maybe write songs or something like that? She said, and I was like, no way, I would never do that. And um, more because the words God and Holy Spirit and like all those Christian terminology words, um, they really uh, add a big allergy towards them. Um, so I was quite surprised when maybe two years later or so, I just felt like somebody was literally just pulling me towards the piano where the workbook lesson, let me remember I'm one with God, uh, was lying open. And um, this whole song just poured through me like within half an hour and I was just crying and like writing it down. It was a beautiful song with lyrics all coming from that workbook lesson. I was like, what the F is this? Um, because it just really didn't feel like I, I wrote it. It really came through me and it had so much God words in them, like something that I felt like I would never write something like that. And I, I thought it was beautiful, but I also felt quite ashamed um and then the next day the same thing happened and the next day the same thing happened and like this continued for two weeks until i had 16 songs entirely um like filled with lyrics from different workbook lessons um yeah so that was really crazy for me i was like what is this like i just couldn't ignore to write them down like i would try sometimes like i would say like no not now i'm busy when i would feel that that, that song coming in and then i don't know i just felt like I, I would get like so nauseous or something and i just had to sit down and write them down otherwise i don't know i just wouldn't feel 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 good so um yeah it just took me quite some years actually to finally surrender to say like hey this these songs didn't came through me just to have them lying on a shelf you know these songs are so supportive for people and um it's 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 yeah they're just so healing and to support people on their path so it was actually in the voice of holland where i decided or where that decision was made in my mind like okay yeah i was standing there in front of the judges in a live show like with millions of people watching and I remember, like, I don't even know what the judges were saying to me, but I just remember saying in my mind, like, wow, I have a whole album lying home that is, its purpose is healing. And I'm here now in this show where everything is about shining and looking beautiful and making sure you get the most votes and making sure that whatever song you pick, the purpose of it is to get the most votes, like, just be the most popular one. And I was like, I have a whole song. And the purpose is not that it's healing and that's where i decided like okay <laughs> when i'm out of here um i'm gonna do this i'll i'll surrender and i'll also very clear said to spirit like but i am not gonna do anything because i really don't know like i'm still very ashamed that i wrote these sort of like christian songs like how other people might perceive them they would think that i gone super religious i was like you take it over, I'll just follow. And I think that was the best thing that I ever did also to really hand over, um, hand over everything in this project and not to do anything myself and to just follow. Yeah, from there on <laughs> that journey began. It was just, it's been a crazy ride, but now the city is almost finished and I've learned so much and experienced so much miracles and, 
it's just it's been really crazy but i'm very very grateful to be able to do this and to bring these songs to everybody oh that's beautiful i loved hearing like the way you just described the songs coming in like it was it was just a download like it wasn't a person writing them it was like them being received and it just flashed through my mind when you were sharing that the way helen shuckman you know described the the course being given right. to her you know she tried to to push it away but it actually was more painful to do that than to let it come through yeah so, it's really yeah. beautiful yeah i can really relate to that when i when, and also that she was feeling so ashamed of it in the beginning thinking like oh i'm so crazy like i had that too like what is this like i really even still honestly right now i like i'm getting better at it but if i have to be completely honest still I still feel a little bit like not full like it's I'm getting there and I'm fully like just oh here here they are but I still feel a little bit um scared or not scared but a little it's not fully healed yet that okay here's this course in miracles album it's still a little bit on the down low there's still this part that's like okay I know all of my course in miracles crowd will completely embrace this but how will other people like I feel I need to explain you know that it's not religious that it's not yeah there's still some stuff there so it, it's just a journey of really surrendering but I mean like at this point and already a long time ago like I just couldn't I couldn't resist anymore so I really felt like spirit was also saying like it's completely fine like I already got you like I know I know you can turn back now so I also felt like all of those doubts and all of those struggles there there was so much space for that to just feel that and let that be there and it, it, I don't have to go faster than than I'm going and um, I feel like spirit has been guiding me so gentle through all of this and it's just really like even with, with making decisions like there would be so much times where I heard from the beginning already certain decisions that would have to, that, that that were there to to make like for instance um skip the introduction and the outro like first i had 18 songs and that was just like an intro and an outro and i was very attached to them and i heard from the beginning already like they're not necessary and you know but then that brought so much fear like no i'm like sacrificing something you know so then i ignored it and like so much of times it came up but like so gentle I felt like it would just come up like this this inspiration like you know sweetie like really like that you really don't need it but it's okay you know whenever you're ready and then this week when I was really busy with um putting down the set list and deciding like which song should go first I heard it so very clear again like you really don't need the introduction and the outro you can just go into it right away and then yeah then I just I just felt like checking it with my engineer because I know like when two people are joined you know like you you'll hear the same thing so I checked with my engineer like I've been hearing this but just wanted to check with you and he was like oh girl I I never wanted those songs in there like from the beginning I knew like they weren't needed so you know it's like stuff like that so I knew like okay it's okay to let them go and then I heard so clear like they were always there for you and then I just got goosebumps all over because like the introduction, it's it's a beautiful text from, from the chorus. And it's just basically saying like, you know, the light has come. I can but choose the light for it has no alternative. It has replaced the darkness and the darkness is gone. The light has come. Like it was basically saying like, there's no alternative. Like, like you can turn back like there's this is already the cd is already there you know what i mean like all of this already happened like you don't need to do anything and then the outro is saying um you do not walk alone god's angels hover near and all about um i will never leave you comfortless so the outro i feel like it was more for me to know like okay the city is now here and this is the outro like i got you you do not walk alone i'm here with you and um yeah so that i just had got goosebumps when i felt like okay so this was this was for me and yeah it's stuff like that it's just really crazy but yeah 
It's beautiful. It, it sounds like just even the process of putting this album together from, you know, when the songs started coming through right through the recording and production, there's just been so much healing. And I know yeah. you shared with me when you went into the recording studio to record the song, God is the love in which I forgive myself, that right. you had like a huge healing experience. Maybe you could just share with everyone about yeah. that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it was quite funny because um, I'm making a behind the scene documentary, like a little short documentary. Um, and when we, so when we first met, she was like, okay, so what do you want the documentary to be about? And I told her like, I really want people to see that it's not because the album is called The Light Has Come, right? So I don't want it to just be all light and all love. I want them to see the darkness that I had to go through the darkness, that it's okay, you know, the darkness um, is allowed to be there also. And I don't want it to be all like lovey and dovey. Um, so I told her that and she, for the first filming session, she went with me to the studio and every time I went to the studio, I would ask in, in, in meditation in the morning, like, which song would you have me sing for today? And I heard very clear, God is the love in which I forgive myself. And it, it was a pretty hard song. So I was like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure that's the song you want me to sing? And I heard very clear, like, yes, that's the song. It's like, okay, are you sure? So I went in the studio and I started singing the song and she went with me and she, she was filming me. And uh, I was singing the song and it just, didn't go at all like my voice was just breaking up and I couldn't even go past the first chorus and I was just training myself and it wasn't going good at all and like after half an hour I heard like okay you're done now I was like I'm done I didn't even like nothing of this is good but I was like okay I'm done so I told my producer like Tony I think I'm done and he said yeah I think you're done too like okay uh, what is this N different song or no I felt like okay I have to go outside and just talk a bit about this so we went to a park like right around the corner from the studio and I sat down and she put on the camera and she's like okay what happened and I just started crying <laughs> and all of this stuff came up and I was like how can I sing this song and because it's, you know, the workbook lesson, right? God is the love in which I forgive myself. Um, God doesn't forgive for he never condemned. Um, it was just so, there was just, there was so much guilt coming up. Like feeling almost like a fraud to be able to sing this. I was feeling so much like I can't. I, I remember saying something like, how can I be happy if the people I love aren't happy? And um, I'm not supposed to sing this song and you know like a lot of lot of shit just coming up and I ended saying like you know I feel like in the end it's all about knowing that Jesus got my back and to really feel that and to trust that he got my back and then we turn around and like right behind me there was this huge Jesus statue <laughs> that we didn't see like we walked right past it it was like I never like I never seen a Jesus statue in Holland ever, like especially in Rotterdam, maybe it's a small village, I don't know, but it was huge. And it was standing there with one hand on his heart and the other hand like um, open like that. And I was like, wow, <laughs> this is really crazy. And even my producer, he walked through that park to the studio every day and he never seen that Jesus statue. <laughs> we never seen it. It's like, okay, that's pretty crazy. So. Yeah, so in that time after, um, I had like another month before I felt the inspiration again to record it. And in that month, I had so much, so much forgiveness stuff to do and like so much healing. Um, and then when I went in the studio again to sing it, it was just amazing. It went so easy and just with so much, just effortlessly, it just yeah we had like six takes where i just sang the whole song from beginning to end and i was just crying while i was singing it and it was just beautiful mm. yeah so it's like every almost every song or not almost i think every song just took me through my own healing journey and i think maybe that's that's why it also i know i think that that might be very helpful so for people that will listen to it that and it was funny, you know, that it's on the documentary. Like, I was like, I want people to see the darkness. And then 
I understand why Spirit chose that song for that morning where she was filming was like you want some darkness okay sing that song i got a lot of stuff for you <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. i love that i love the way you weren't even able to sing the song until you got in touch with with what was deeper and and had that profound healing and like yeah. just really seeing that it's not about just singing a beautiful song it's like being so connected with your heart in it and and allowing something like real to come through and yeah i just wanted to also to to ask you a little bit about um about the work you do with voice liberation sessions with people because i think it's tied in with what you're even saying about your experience in the studio and and I know that, that um, you and I have, have been called by the Spirit to be used in that way to, to um, do sessions one-on-one -on -one or, or in a group context. And we've talked about this before, and I know for both of us, it's, it's the same thing where it's not really about teaching somebody to sing or even you know, having a beautiful voice came, come out in the end, even though that might happen, but it's really using the voice as like an instrument to, um, to get in touch with something deeper. So I think we just have a few minutes left, but I would love if, if you would be able to just share a little bit about, about yeah, that in, the inspiration for you to work with people in, in that right. way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, for me, it's the first time that I really truly experienced the healing powers of, of doing the voice liberation sessions with other people. Um, in um, the Tabula Rasa retreat of David Hoffmeister last May, I think it was, right? Um, it was just a really beautiful experience because I did do like a two years education, like a school, a voice liberation school where, where I learned to give voice liberation sessions to other people, but I never actually really did it because I more used it for myself and to be able to just um, just be free on stage. But then when I was at the retreat, I, even before that, I felt very inspired to do it. I felt like I'm, it's ready for me to also use the, the voice in this, in this type of way. And then with this work, I really, really experienced um, for the first time, very, very, very clear that I really don't have to do anything because I still have some, some problems sometimes when like with the CD to, to, just hear one voice like then I'm, I'm hearing doubts and then i'm hearing this or that but when i'm giving these voice liberation sessions that's the first time that i actually experience and i really trust upon that i really don't have to do anything like i really nothing like it's so clear like the voice the voice of the spirit is just so so clear and everything is so guided of what i need to do and every time it's different but like you say it's really not about it um, bringing out a beautiful voice or like teach anybody to sing like I really feel like the spirit is just using me um, to use the voice to just um, see whatever wants to come up like to just uncover all of the darkness all of the layers that just are ready to shine light upon and it's I had some amazing amazing sessions where it was just it was just so amazing where you can just go straight through and go you can just see people go through all of these layers and get to the core of what's really going on and to sing that and to express that it's just so healing to witness that even and yeah I, I think like for the people that did it also like their reactions and everything it was really amazing so yeah I don't know like every time it's just different but Sometimes it's just screaming and sometimes there's just this beautiful song that comes out and every time it's something different, but yeah, I can't really put my finger on it, what it is exactly, but yeah, I, I like that I don't have to do anything, <laughs> just listening. You feel, you feel yeah. the essence in, in what you're yeah. saying, given moment by moment by the spirit and just Definitely. allow whatever needs to come through. I'm getting the signal that we just have one minute left. So okay. yeah, I just, I just want to thank you, Netta, for coming on the show. It's so beautiful to have you here and just to hear your experiences. And I, I want to share with everyone as well that Netta and I are both going to be singing at the Strawberry Fields Music and Enlightenment Festival um, this August in Utah. 
And directly after that, we're going to be holding a voice, the Heart Song Voice Liberation Workshop. So just exactly what Netta has been talking about, um, we're going to be we're going to have four days where we're really going to use the voice as an instrument for this deeper connection with the spirit. So um, if you are interested in that at all, um, the website addresses for both events are going to be put in the comment box. So feel free just to go and, and have a look and, and see the beautiful strawberry website with all the musicians on there. And yeah, just, um, just to finish off with, um, we're going to leave you with a, a recording of Netta singing at the recent ACIM conference in San Francisco, where she sings the song, God is the love in which I forgive myself. The one she was just talking about how she had such a profound healing. So yeah, thank you, Netta. And thank you everyone for being here today. And um, I'll see you soon. Thank you. Love you. Mm -hmm. Love you too. God is the love.